So most of you guys probably know me from here in Poetry in Motion, but some of, some of you might know me from out on Cuba Street. And if you don't, that's all right. I would like to take this opportunity to introduce you to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You see, my God is so much better than your God, and you realize that there's more than one, right? And they're all fighting like Thor and Superman, and so cute you think of yours is on the winning side. It's like watching a sports game or an election. People crammed into a stadium hall and stampeding even though the game is rigged and fixed. Let me tell you about my God. My God has always led me to live in a place that's a valley between a city and sometimes a sea, but literally and figuratively, I've never tried heroin. Man, I've done a lot of LSD. <laughs> I've never been hungry. I think few people in this room really have. But I have seen poverty. I've watched a friend die. I've lost a couple of suicides. You know what? Overall, my life has pretty much been all right. Yeah, I grew up in the suburbs. Everything was provided for me. I only had to work the summers until I graduated university. My dad grew up in a place where the closest source of drinking water was four kilometers away. And when he was a teenager, he was so happy because the government finally installed taps on the street. And I realized at this point in the story, he's not talking about a village. They didn't have clean water to drink inside of the city. When my sister was seven years old, she was taken from everything she'd ever known. Asked to leave her friends, her family, her gods behind, all like so many other kids, for a chance at a better life. And our God delivered us to that place where I would be born, the place that my family would call their home, the great nation of California. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise, it's a country all its own. The West Coast should just cut itself off from that other nation that likes the Welch as predator drones. <laughs> Would it be that I could actually claim California or Oregon or Washington, the state that now has legal weed? But nah, man, I grew up in the state of Tennessee. Don't get me wrong, a place of immense beauty and majesty where churches outnumber gas stations because people need to refuel on God. And I hate to admit it, but I drank that petrol. I let it burn straight to my soul. I accepted Jesus Christ, and I fell in love with being on the winning side. I have friends now. I mean, it wasn't the first time in my life, but it's really hard when you're 14 years old and one of two kids in your classroom that's standing up for gay rights. Yeah, how many of you guys are called faggots and dykes? Yeah, you nerds, you know who you are, the ones with the 300 BTS modems, or maybe you play D&D, or maybe you have a stack of Magic the Gathering cards. Yeah, I'm really surprised that anyone would sleep with us, true. But it's true, I've been to the other side. I've experienced it more than five times, but only had to pay for it twice. That's a joke, or maybe not, but the fact is, I truly believe that I knew Jesus Christ. For six long years, I would literally stay in front of thousands of teenagers and tell them about how he changed my life. I was getting high on a porch in Kentucky the day that my Sunday school teacher and my grandmother died. And to this day, I still don't know what, if anything, that means, but the last memory that my grandmother had of me was of a disobedient child growing up to be an intolerant teen. And it was years later before I'd even begin to understand that being able to say the words, I don't know, was the first step in truly becoming a man. So don't come down here with your Allah and your Jesus and your Christian. Don't come and try to take my gods away from me. They're not much, but they got me this far. My gods are every single person in my life who's made a little bit of room for me in their hearts. And I will always have room for all of you to become. Heart is like a TARDIS, small enough to fit your chest cavity, yet large enough to crush gravity. And if there is an afterlife, I'd like to think that every woman and man who has ever loved and lived would raise a hand in protest, asking God why he would let his children start wars so they can steal from the poor and give to the rich. And the people who say it's not his fault when people kill in God's name, I'm like, what, did God's trademark lawyer call him sick today? If there is no rapture, if there is no end of days, if God truly has given up on the entire human race, or maybe God is calling sick today, then it's up to us to get this world out of God's hands. It's up to us to make this world a better place, because the earth is nothing more than a speck on a great cosmic landscape. They're literally trillions of planets orbiting trillions of stars. It took us thousands of years for us to get this far, putting paintings on caves and making it into space, creating weapons so mighty they could destroy our entire race. Einstein once said, I know not which weapons World War III will be fought. But World War IV will be fought with sticks and stones. And when I look at the sky, I wonder how many other people have made it this far without destroying their homes. They actually go out and explore, explore the cosmos and realize that we are not alone. Are my gods better than your gods? Are your gods better than mine? Does it even matter when the earth completely disappears, lost to the great pages of time? What if we could love one another, like we love our brothers or sisters, like our sons and our wives, or love so divine that we could end homelessness and poverty, cure cancer, and all of our strife? Or if we could just keep on taking each other's lives, convinced that we're not afraid to die because we know what's on the other side. But we don't know, and we won't know, because by very definition, death is the point at which it is literally impossible for you and I to feel any regret. But if you've made a difference in someone's life, then maybe we can begin to turn these ties into all these lives, and then we can explore space together, both the space in the sky and the space deep in our minds, and we'll no longer be afraid to die, and not because of a promise of another life, but because the love we have will be so strong, we can take all of our hatred, hold it underwater until we can drown all of our wrongs, and we'll stand proudly on this tiny blue sphere with a map and a pen with the story ends, but not where it begins, and we'll proclaim loudly to the heavens, we are here. <laughs>